Benji Doit, welcome to the forest, sacred place of the Lord of the Greenwood, Kernunos. I want to read you something I wrote about my own spiritual journey, my own personal journey through the forest, and how I got to be where I am today. It's called I Walk the Old Path. This is a brief account of my own spiritual journey. Please understand that it is in no way intended as an indict indictment of other belief systems. For much of the bedrock of my current spirituality is the belief that no one has a right to dictate anyone else's spiritual path. This is simply a history of mine. Do with it what you will. I was raised in a very traditional pre-Vatican II Bones of the Saints Irish Catholic family. I was a committed Catholic altar boy. I attended the school started by the first native-born American saint, Elizabeth Ann Seton. My room was filled with holy cards and statues and crucifixes and miraculous medals and scapulas and rosary beads. As an adult, I was a Eucharistic minister, a lector, a youth leader, a choir leader, and a parish council member. In college, I took on leadership roles in campus ministries that exposed me to all of the major Christian denominations. I could quote the Bible with the best of them. I eventually left my Catholicism for a non-denominational fundamentalist church, converted in a dramatic born-again experience in which I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I even had the baptism in the Spirit and spoken tongues. As a lay minister, I led Bible studies, taught Sunday school, planned services, baptized, counseled, participated in prison ministries, and evangelized regularly and quite successfully through the arts, particularly theater. The cross was the central image of my life. All of this is to say that I have a very intimate and sincere involvement with the theology and practices of Christianity. However, I never stopped being the little boy who used to sneak up into the Appalachian woods and feel the power emanating from the trees and the streams and the mushrooms and from the places unseen. I loved them as I loved all living things. I felt a kinship verging on oneness. I called the powers fairies before I knew that such things were unacceptable in the world of the church. When I did learn that, I simply tucked the fairies away into hiding, for I could not dismiss them. I turned my love of forest creatures into an admiration for St. Francis of Assisi, and aspired to speak with the birds like he did. I kept this little boy separated from the harsher elements of my religion, the bloody torture and death of Jesus, my inherent sinfulness, the drowning of those not on the ark, the holy wars, the killing of every man, woman, and child. Eventually, it was impossible to reconcile that little boy's desire to love all things with the theology that told me I was to accept that some are unacceptable. My religion to me was a good guys, bad guys scenario that never really worked for me, even in childhood cops and robber games. After all, that robber was really my older brother, and that Indian to my cowboy was my best friend Debbie. When I finally rebelled and refused to separate the sheep from the goats, in myself or in others, I became a stranger in the church. And when I came out of the closet, embracing that goat part of me that is a gay man, I was told I could either continue to hate and revile that part of me, or I could leave. I left. After the loss of what I saw as my spiritual home, I tried for years to deny all things spiritual, but I could not erase my memory of the forest. I still longed to make the deeper connections with the universe around me. Eventually, I met others who were men and women of the forest, of the earth, of air, of water, and fire. They understood me when I talked about my friends who were trees and mountains and chipmunks. I took their hands and called myself a pagan. It was a rebirth like nothing I had ever experienced before. I was asked recently what I gained from paganism that I did not find in Christianity. The right to accept and love myself in totality is the primary thing, but there are others. As a father, I no longer had to embrace the central image of the sacrificial son dying a protracted and bloody death because of the wrath of the father. In paganism, all sons and daughters are to be cherished, and the images of children are celebratory. In Christianity, there is a father and a son in the Godhead, but no mother and no daughter. Certainly there is no gay man. The Godhead did not reflect me or even understand and cherish me. I was instead reviled. I could put away my cross now, that implement of capital punishment, and carry instead the primary symbol of paganism, 
the all-embracing circle. I can stop seeing babies as tainted with original sin of Adam and Eve and start seeing them as the perfect, sacred beings that they are. I can honor all things feminine as equal in value and power to things masculine, for in my pantheon there is also a goddess and a spring maiden, as well as the great god of light and the sun. I could reject the irrationality of the dogma that the world was created for my use and my dominion and relax into the understanding that I am one magnificent part of an equally magnificent whole. I am truly a brother of the ant and the heron and the sweeping horizon. I could find comfort in the great mother as well as protection in the great father. I can leave behind the danger of swallowing revealed truth, whether by pastor or scripture, and continue on the never-ending joyous adventure of discovering and honoring my own path, my own vision, and my own truth. I can stop trying desperately to make others believe as I do and start smiling at the wonder of our diversity in all things, including spiritual paths. I can stop fearing my body as a source of temptation and shame and begin to revel in the pleasure and laughter and insight that it gives me. I can cash in the concept of sin and collect the dividend of harmony with all things. I can integrate into instead of separate out. Most of all, I can stop seeing the world as a constant battle between opposing forces, between heaven and hell, light and darkness, saved and unsaved, God and Satan, holy and unholy, redeemed and condemned, us and them, male and female, rural and urban. I can start finding true wisdom by learning to integrate these seemingly contradictory forces, to see how they work in tandem to create something even larger than themselves. In paganism, these forces are simply the forces of balance that make a whole world possible. The shadow is no less valid than the tree that casts it. The labor of the day is nothing without the slumber of the night. You are gravity, I am centrifugal force, and together we create a habitable earth. There is no contradiction anymore between the sacredness of the divine and the sacredness of me and the sacredness of the planet. I can find in our disagreement a chance for both of us to find a more complete balance. I no longer have to draw battle lines. I can instead build bridges. Do you remember the teeter-totter, the rise and fall, the thrill of the height and the bump of the ground? I remember vividly from my childhood that amazing and giddy moment when a friend and I were able to balance the teeter-totter so that we were both suspended above the ground, balancing each other into the very air itself. What a triumph of peerage. What a simple joy. That is what I found in paganism. That, and I can dance around the fairy rings without shame. Blessings of the wisdom of the forest to you. Benji Doit, journey well.